Good evening and welcome to our last Team Maths of the 2020-2021 school year. A special welcome to the sixth graders and their families and all graduating seniors and their families. If you've not already done so, please silence your cell phones. Thank you. In the gospel today, we are reminded that Jesus is the true vine and we are the branches. Let us now take a moment to prepare our hearts to receive our Lord through word and sacrament in the mass we join in celebrating this evening. Please stand and greet our celebrant, Father Waters. And please join in singing number 163, Alleluia, Love is Alive, number 163. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so repair ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those who are pleased to make new and holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Children, let us not love in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth, and reassure our hearts before him, and whatever our hearts condemn, for God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God, and receive from him whatever we ask, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. 
And the way we know he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither, People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Admittedly, today's Mass is somewhat bittersweet because it's our last of the so-called season, but it is a consolation to think, everyone, that at the, when we reinitiate our youth Masses in the fall, maybe we won't even have to wear masks anymore. That would be kind of awesome. So let's hope for the best that, you know, we really are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel and that it will be a joyous reunion when it does come. So I'm looking forward to that immensely. I'm sure you are, too. Today in the gospel, we have our Lord really using, as he is very fond of doing, a lot of agricultural imagery. And he wants to really emphasize to us the importance of nourishment in our lives. Now this morning when I had First Holy Communion for the kids, it was fun because it was such a perfect example and time to use that idea of nourishment in the Holy Eucharist and kind of explain that Our Lord feeds us with his body and blood, and that's one of the ways in which we receive nourishment. Nourishment is something all of us need, from when we're very little to the day we die. We need food, and we need good food to make sure that we get all the vitamins and minerals we need to grow and to thrive. But then nourishment takes other forms as well. So human love and friendship, those things which nourish our minds and our souls, These are the things which we need in order to truly thrive in life and not just survive in life. And so you and I were always seeking nourishment so that we could have life. And then with that fullness of life, 
we're able to bestow life on others. Now, I didn't have enough time in the Mass this morning to focus on that point, but that's one which I'd like to focus on tonight. And that is the word of St. John. Children, let us love not in word and in speech, but in deed and in truth. That is to say, not only does our Lord choose to nourish us through his sacraments, but he also nourishes us by his word, which is precisely why when we gather to celebrate the Holy Mass, we do two things, right? We hear the word and we're nourished interiorly thereby, and then we receive the Eucharist and are so nourished furthermore. And that is something which is so powerful for us that often we could take it for granted. And today is a great day to ask ourselves whether we are taking quality spiritual nutrition or whether we're eating the equivalent of, you know, ice cream and mayo every day. You know, the idea that we're not really taking into our spiritual diet those things which are helpful to growth and to development in the spiritual order of things. You know, some of you may have ever seen the episode, the uh, show The Simpsons, where Homer Simpson, in one fell swoop, eats a jar of mayonnaise and drinks a whole fifth of vodka. And then Marge yells at him and says, Homer, you can't have all that. That's terrible for you. And you think about your health. And then Homer kind of laughs at Marge and says, heh, that's future Homer. And thank God I'm not that guy. <laughs> and that's typical of how we behave, right? So that's something we can punt, as it were, to a future us, our spiritual health, just like our physical health. And we know that's not true, that eventually these things will catch up with us. This is why our Lord says, if we don't remain in him, we will wither. And then at the end of our lives, we'll be cast away from the life of God because we weren't connected to the divine while we lived. Our Lord really does encourage us today to stay connected to him. And that is why even though this youth mass may take a break for the summer, there are so many ways in which we must continue to remain connected to that vine by attending mass, participating in the sacramental life in the church, and yes, hearing and obeying the word that Christ gives us. It's funny that our Lord says this very many times to us that Obedience to his commandments is part of which helps him to live in us in an effective way. But then something else comes to pass. As we bear fruit on the vine, people go by us, and as, in a sense, they pick the fruit that we bear. What are those fruits? St. Paul mentions them as fruits of the Holy Spirit. Joy, patience, peace, long-suffering, and so on. And he says that they're fruits of the Holy Spirit. Fruits are sweet, and when we bear them, they are sweet for all sorts of people we meet in our lives. And so a good question to ask ourselves today is, are we bearing fruit for others? Just as remaining connected to the divine is nourishment for us, so we can provide access to so many people around us, to the nourishing word of Christ and his healing word in the world. Today is a wonderful day to ask the good God, Lord, how can I be obedient to you so that I may bear fruit and so glorify you? How can I remain on the vine? Jesus is emphatic. Unless you remain in me and I in you, you can do nothing. Not something, not a few things, absolutely nothing. So with Christ then, I think the thing we can infer then on the opposite end of that is, in Christ, we can do anything. Do you and I believe that? And do you and I drink deeply from the richness and nourishment Christ wishes to provide us? That will not stop in any way this summer. We ask the good God to nourish us on our way and to keep us safe in all our goings on. Together, let us stand and profess our faith.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus, the true vine, provides us with all that we need to bear good fruit. Confident of God's care for us, let us now turn to him in prayer for ourselves and all his people. Our response is, keep us close to you. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops and priests, that they may be strengthened by the Holy Spirit, so that they may be faithful witnesses of the gospel, we praise the Lord. Keep us close to you. For all members of the church, that we may root our faith in Jesus Christ as we grow ever closer to him through daily prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Keep us close to you. For those among us who are receiving our Lord in Holy Communion for the first time over these two weekends, may they be nourished by our Lord throughout their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Keep us close to you. For those who are sick, and especially Joseph Jew, as well as those who are affected by the coronavirus, that they may experience God's love through our care for them. We praise the Lord. Keep us close to you. For the faithful departed, and in particular, Alan Monzo, Father Francis Cornelly, and Monsignor Paul Curran, as well as those who have succumbed to COVID-19, that they may be led to God's heavenly kingdom. Let us praise the Lord. Keep us close to you. Heavenly Father, your Son has indeed died and been raised. He calls us to follow him to new life. Help us to remain close to him so that we may bear the good fruit of building up your kingdom here on earth until that day when he leads us to your eternal kingdom. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our risen Lord. Amen. Please join us in singing our preparation hymn, number 167, Hallelujah is our song, number 167.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Yeah. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, <clears throat> to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment and in the, in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. What we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. He may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please join us in singing our communion hymn, number 187, One Sacrifice of Christ, number 187.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. So at the end of this season, as it were, we're very grateful once again to our musicians, our Seth Tuig and Mr. Uh, Dr. Latham and everyone else we know here who's been so wonderful and accompanied us through this year and how grateful we are for their presence. We're also grateful for our eighth graders today who are transitioning to high school and we wish to give you guys a little blessing today. So eighth graders, if I could ask you please to bow your heads and we'll invoke God's blessings over you. Oh, that's right. Good call. So high school seniors too. Anyone who's going somewhere. Heck, you know, even if you're a senior citizen, maybe we'll bless you too. No? <laughs> so high school, senior, eighth grade, all the above, anyone going to another grade, we're going to pray for God's special blessing over you. Let us pray. Oh God, during this season of new beginnings, we ask you to bless these seniors and eighth graders. May they sense the freshness of your spirit over their lives in new ways. May they be strengthened, filled with hope for the new roads that lie ahead of them for each of them. We pray that you protect them as they embark on their new and exciting adventures. Please guide them on their journey that they will be prepared to encounter all these opportunities. Bless these students with humility in times of success and strength in times of challenge. Fill their minds with your thoughts, fill their bodies with your strength, and fill their hearts with your dreams. We ask all this in the glorious and risen name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, world without end. Amen. Amen. And then I, I understand where uh, all those who were blessed today are invited to come up after uh, Mass, and we would like to take some sort of a shot with you, a picture, not, not a drink, a picture. <laughs> so we're hoping that uh, for the best for you for all going forward. And then also um, for sixth grade, a most warm welcome to you, to, our, to your continuing education among us, and for your own transition into your further education. It's such a great joy. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. So right after Mass, um, as Father said, we'll take our picture, and then there's Capri water ice um, in the breezeway, so please um, help yourselves uh, to, I have gigantic gallons of Capri, so you're all responsible to eat like five or six, so, um, but please help yourself. Yeah. Please join in singing our closing hymn, number 381, Go Out, Go Out, number 381. Go out, go out to all the world and tell them. 